Good morning, everyone. Another wonderful chance for me to be present at the one and only Next Pharma Summit. Thanks, Dario and the team, for the invitation. My name is Mustafa Taha. I'm the VP, Head of Global Business Transformation at Merck Healthcare, and I'm passionate about innovation. Uh, to be honest, I was very pleased to see yesterday that we have advanced a lot on the topic of mindset, skill set, and the tool sets, which are the main basic fundamentals of moving towards the real transformation in the pharma industry. But to get the maximum insights out of such forums, I think we need to be more honest and to share more about the key lessons learned and the pain points that we faced during our journeys. So I will do a very quick recap on the mindset, the skill set, and the tool set. Then I will move to the uh, piece of innovation and how to create the needed equilibrium between innovation and foundation across the organization. So starting with the mindset, it has been crunched a lot during the past days, but I would like to say that most of the organization started by appointing technology people across the organization to be the go-to person when it comes to technology. And business people were already existing in the organization, and they started to interact together. In fact, to get the real maximum value of fixing the mindset, we need a third profile, which is the hybrid profile between business and technology. So we need to equip our business people with what technology can do, and we need to orient the technology colleagues on what we need to achieve from the business side. This hybrid profile will enable us to achieve the commercial value or reach a new horizons for commercial excellence. When we talk about the skill set, there is an iceberg. There is the top of the iceberg where the obvious core skills are there, and it evolves now in a very strong momentum. The key point here is to look at the lower part of the iceberg, the 80% of the newly dynamic evolving essential skills that by time are coming to move from being on the bottom part to be on the top part. So what was the lesson learned in the skill set or the capability building uh, uh, chapter in the company is that we need to make sure that we have a dedicated team to invest into this piece and to make sure that they are dynamic enough to move with a very fast pace with the needed capability building chapters that need to be launched across the organization. Talking about the tool set, we all have a CRM system, but some of us are victims of static CRM systems. To the message to the service providers and the consultant houses, whenever there is a solution that is static, this has to be shown from the beginning that we will be stuck with it. It's like having a mobile phone where you have the software updates that can never be updated to the next one, and you're not able to download new applications. So you have a nice thing for now, but for the future, it will be a problem. So moving to the process optimization, the key word here that we used to have is simplifying processes. And I would say we need to move another level on this piece, and we start to abolish processes from the scratch. So whatever that doesn't make sense in the process of business excellence need to be removed. This is the perfect opportunity when you do a transformation across the organization to abolish processes that doesn't add value to the organization. The third piece is the data, and I know that this is a very big chapter, and I would like to highlight that we all know that data is the base for innovation, but what is the link between the mindset, skill set, and tool set to the innovation piece? Simply, there are several business excellence archetypes. There is the famous one, which is the efficiency and effectiveness, the new basic go-to-market models, looking at top line and bottom line. There is the archetype B, which is the customer centricity, how to be more personalized in our approach, the segmentation. And there is the service innovation one, which is now getting more and more famous. The future now is about the hybrid one between B and C. So the customer centricity and service innovation are critically linked to the mindset, skill set, and the tool set that we spoke about. To move towards innovation, you cannot just move to do something new. The whole organization needs a North Star, needs something to look up to. 
And this North Star is not just a bunch of people sitting together to design what the future looks like and then to put it for the organization. It requires different sprints to move in parallel. One, the outside in perspective. And I think conferences like this one gives us a very fresh outlook of what good looks like and what we need to do next. Second, the subject matters experts. So we cannot just let them design it and give it to the business. They need to connect with the business and the technology team to understand the DNA of the organization and whether the organization is fit to move to that level or no. And third, the benchmarking. So we always need to see what is happening around and what are the lessons learned from the other experiments in other organizations. Let's say we have the North Star, and the North Star, we know that it will be revolving around those three topics, how to be more advanced, how to be more efficient, and how to be more targeted. How to be more advanced, this is the augmented rep of the future, the hybrid one that use data science. How to be more efficient, this is the technology and the optimized go-to-market model. And how to be more targeted, and this is the component that requires an effort from the new technology and the data science team. Now, me coming from purely business perspective and wearing a very small hat of technology, I got stuck at the beginning to understand how to use data science in my business model. So I asked my team to simplify it for dummies, for me, and to tell me where the story started and how to deploy it. So we all know that it started like this. Customers who bought this item bought also that item, and Companies like Amazon started to develop algorithm, and this helped them a lot to do some predictive analysis. But there are lots of buzzwords. There is deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Do me, as a business person, need to know all of this? Well, in fact, I need to know what this will add to me in business. So I asked the team to simplify it more to the language that can be digestible by the business teams. Accordingly, we reached into this picture. First phase of AI, this phase that we call data consolidation, can answer a question, a business question, on how to build better understanding of current HCPs. And at the same time, segmentation and targeting could be done at this stage in a better way. The next level, this quantitative analysis, this is where the advanced segmentation, the three-dimensional one, can be addressed. And it can answer how to build a holistic 360 view about the customer. The more we go up into the pyramid, the more it's getting advanced. The qualitative analysis phase, this is the channel excellence, how to deploy resources in a better way and how to increase the coverage using the multiple channels that we have. Phase four, the segmented content. This is the dream of everyone to go towards a true content personalization. And finally, the true AI where we will have a super personalized campaigns that can be uh, optimizing the customer engagement experience. Where are we as industry for this? So this paper by Accenture, it shows that we are still at the bottom of the AI maturity. So we have a very long way to go. But referring to last day presentations and colleagues who were mentioning that we should not compare ourselves with Netflix, with Uber, but we should understand why we are at the bottom while those industries have utilized this power. And even the projected, the blue bottom, the blue, the blue uh, point here, it shows 2024 projected maturity. So even the projection is not very far from the current status. So does this mean that we have to go and just do innovation and select solutions and work on it? Well, in fact, you need to do a very extensive exercise. You need to start from collecting the needs, step number one, closely in contact with the business, understand the business issue. And then you align with your current internal stakeholders. The moment you get a buy-in, the moment you get an endorsement, this is where you can put this solution for an experiment and then to start to scale it up and move forward. But bear in mind that this phase highlighted, it takes a long time. So you may screen 15 solution, while three of them only will address the business need, and out of the three, one is feasible based on your data maturity level. And a message as well to our partners in crime, consultant houses, service providers, you need to respect as well this phase, that whatever you will come with, you need to invest time to understand the need from the company, so that whatever you will bring will make sense for the business. 
One example is the segmentation one. We're all familiar with this. So in the past, it was just targeting customers in the same way. In the future, it's tailoring the approach to make sure that we have a smart promotional strategy. And we know that there are three dimensions. There is the potential one, like A, B, C. And there is the behavioral segmentation that was mainly launched in the specialty care area. And there is the main one, the channel preference one, that somehow revolutionized how we look at the physicians from three dimensions. But to do this, there are many levels of advancements. So you can start by simply have the digital interest, and you can say, I have 3D segmentation. You can take it to the next level, and you understand the behavioral and the affinity per channel. You can take it to another level of marketing mix modeling. And it was mentioned as well yesterday that some companies have already cracked the code on this thing in order to understand how much to invest to get how much in return. And last but not least, to build this holistic view of having the depth, breadth, and consistency of engagement so that you tailor your activities based on data science approach. So are we showing off here that we can do all of this? No, we cannot do it very easy and everywhere. And I want to echo as well what was said yesterday about bridging the gap. So the function that will be driving those solutions will have a very big gap between the customer-facing roles, your point of contact with the HCPs. If you don't bridge the gap between having the nice thing and the end user who will be using it, then it will be some nice pilots floating here and there, and then it will be terminated very soon. Speaking about data, as a business person, I used to go to the IT and I say, I need a platform to show me the data in a better way. And then the IT team will go to the data science. They say, we need to structure the data and we need to do one, two, three. And then both they come to the business people and they say, clean up your data and bring us proper data sources. At the end of the day, we realize that it's a matrix of three teams working together and very big intersection between all of them, which is data optimization. So business, IT, data science need to work together to look at the data from an angle that we need to get something out of this data. I'm a big fan of this perceptual mapping, so we all have put many foundational uh, activities or solutions in the organization. When you go up, it means innovation. The left part is standard innovation. The right part is the pilots or the experiments. A pain point that was highlighted a lot in this conference, which is how to scale. So we have been able, as pharma, to standardize some good innovative solutions, but we're still struggling how to move these pilots into the quadrant of being a standard innovation in the organization. And the key solution for this is experimentation. You need to carry on. You need to create a safety net in the organization. You need to celebrate failure. And you need to make sure that the teams are having this kind of confidence that this will bring value. And we need to start and try and try until we find the solutions that will make sense. Five complexes of, of the effective scaling. If you wait for the perfect data, it will never happen. If you lack the mindset of transformation on any level, again, it will be a bottleneck. Underestimate the people component. We spoke about the skill set very, very high level. Losing the outside in perspective. So maybe you can leapfrog with a partner externally that can help you get multiple milestones in one step. And last but not least, if silos exist, good luck. You need to act on this piece because it's really a pain in every organization. So a step-by-step -step approach is the recommendation. So you can start with the ready markets. You don't have to go and convince everyone. And the more you expand, the more markets will adopt those solutions. There is a know-how. So you need to put this know-how in a blueprint. You hand it over to the BU or the GM. At the same time, focus on the quality of the experiments, not the number of experiments. And last but not least, there is a partner cost here. So doing it alone without having partnership externally will take so much time because they have done it in multiple places. And I think if you select the right partner who understand, again, the DNA of the organization, it will be a very good partnership. The mandate is different from global, regional, and local. So let the strategy be done by the global team. Make sure that the local teams understand that they have the ownership, and let the regional team play the proxy, the multiplier, the one who sees where to deploy and how to take this solution from here and deploy it elsewhere. 
So this equilibrium is needed, and I thought that the formula was just the mindset, the skill set, and the tool set. But in fact, if we focus on the mindset, skill set, and tool set, and we miss to identify the North Star, or we miss to enhance the solutions on hand, or we miss to invest into those fundamentals, again, it will be a gap into the formula. The third part is the experimentation and the safety net for failure. So let's not just be future forward looking to deploy innovation while we miss fixing the fundamentals in the organization and we just cross compare some pilots to outside and we say we are already on track. It's the balance between the three, the MST, the North Star and the fundamentals as well as ideation and selecting the right needs and deploying the solutions that are required. I'm a big fan of this slide as well because it shows the journey and it's a very long journey for innovation. So when you start on this y-axis to check the momentum of innovation, it starts with a very high enthusiasm. So you see the excitement, you explore, and then you get some struggles if you have silos, if you have a mismatch in the mindset, so it starts to go down until you reach a moment of realization that you need to deploy this equilibrium. You need to act on the three pillars with the same magnitude. Then it starts to pick up again, then you will see that you are moving closer towards the North Star, and then you start scaling up by the experimentation. My final key takeaway slides. One, shake it off. Any pre-assumptions that you have, like having more reps means more growth, no. Uh, doing more solutions and just pushing it to the countries will bring more value. No. You need to put first things first and you need to focus on the quality and not the quantity and fix the mindset. Two, put customers in perspective. So customers want simplicity. So simplify, evolve and enable your team. Make sure that the customer facing roles are fit for the future. Third point, the outside in. Don't lose focus from the outside in. In COVID, we were a bit blind and it created a big disruption. So the more you have the outside in view, the more you're confident that you are on the right track. KPIs and tracking, what can't be tracked, can't be evolved or can't be improved. And there is a big difference between KPI and tracking metrics. So I can measure how many uh, 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 emails have been sent or what is the open rate or the click-through rate but I need the benchmark of the industry to check whether this is good or bad. And another message to the consultants and the service providers, if you can invest and get us this level of data, it will not be just a race to do more and to do much of the interaction, but to measure it and to have proper KPIs and metrics for tracking. Last but not least, bridge the gap. And this is between global and local, and we have seen the mandate different global, regional and local not only bridge the gap between local and global, but put in perspective the customer-facing role and the gap they have with those business excellence functions. So translate to them the solutions and make sure that they are efficiently utilizing it. So I hope that cracking the codes of moving towards transformation will be a seamless journey for all of us, and I'm quite sure that we will move towards transforming our business model and making sure that the customers are first and we do uh, something that will be enabling our teams to add value to the patients and to our customers. Thank you so much. I think I have one and a half minutes for questions, if any. Please. Thank you very much for a wonderful presentation, as usual. Very clear, very didactical, and very practical. Uh, I want to build on the two things on your last slide, which is shake it off and outside in. Because everything you said for me is, is really the perfect organization of my sandbox, but what if I'm in the wrong sandbox? Um, I mean, another way to look at innovation is to say that true innovation comes from challenging the most fundamental dogma you have. For example, in Africa, we thought we needed cables for people to connect and have phones. And then when you jumped that, we call it leapfrogging, went immediately to mobiles. I have a feeling that HCPs are the cables in this metaphor. If I look, shake it off, what if the model is that in the future, the doctors will not be the prescribers anymore? And we see all across Europe that doctors are overworked, and we see that we go to augmented doctors, whereby repeat prescriptions are moved 
absolutely away from the doctor. Patients are asked to do a lot of themselves. Nurses, we got the example from the UK yesterday. So I would like to challenge your model by saying, how would you do if in that future, maybe digital has a place to not augment the doctor, but to kind of replace the doctor to some point. And I'm saying this as a physician, um, because AI will prescribe probably better in the future. We will have hospital formularies that will tell me what I can prescribe, what I cannot prescribe. So this whole battle for the HCP and the HCP experience seems to me perhaps to be the wrong battle. So really fundamentally shake off the bottom dogma that it's all about the doctor. Thanks for the question. I think the, um, the difference in perspectives here is on the definition of future between what you're saying and what I'm saying. So your, your view on the future is somehow a mid to long term future and more a radical, disruptive and maybe 100% real and it will come. But I have seen moments where you go to a sea level in the organization and you speak about something super disruptive, super radical, very major change into the future. And then you get the reaction that why we're looking at that from now, why we're still having gaps now to look at the two steps future ahead in order to keep our basic fundamentals in place. We have top lines, we have bottom lines, we have profits to make, we have, we have, we have patients to focus on. So we as a function, we're not the function to strategize 10 years ahead. Most of the people I think in the room are business excellence or business colleagues or medical colleagues or consultant houses. They want to see what are we missing now to make sure that the, up, the next three years we are fit for it and we're not getting the shock that we got for the COVID when we got hit and not all of us was ready. So I am in full harmony with what you said that shake it off could be like real shake it off and move forward and imagine the scenarios of what this could look like, but it will be just things that you will not act on right now because your agenda will be filled with other topics in order to fix the next couple of years. So this is, this is my view. I'm aligned with you, but still it's a matter of definition of the future between what you mentioned and what I mentioned. Thank you. Please. Thank you very much, very insightful presentation, very nice slides. My question would be, and I'm just taking one example, um, when you talked about segmentation, the traditional way of segmenting potential, inability and so forth versus looking at the customer more, receptivity in terms of content messages, channels as well. How far did this, what you're showing here, taking now this example, but I could take others, penetrate the organization from you as a center of excellence to this being standard, mainstream, yes. in all business units? In my experience. In your experience, yes. Okay, so we've done it, but then I didn't complete the statement in how many markets, in how many TAs or franchises in the company. So the concept itself was cascaded. The readiness from the markets, not every market have the data enough so to do a, a, a data science solution to help you retrospectively analyze the interactions with the physician, to help you understand the affinity of everyone to every channel is not easy. So we have pilots, we have experiments conducted, implemented, value added is variable, people say excellent or good, depending on how much they digest it. Can be scaled, I doubt it can be scaled very easy. But we need to take these examples as the outliers and we need to find the middle way. We should not stay as is, refraining from merging the 3D segmentations together. And at the same time, we should not have the ambition to have every small, mid-size and big markets having this standard. And by the way, it's a dynamic process because when you analyze, when you have the segments in the next two months, it will be different because HCPs evolve on their digital affinity. They evolve in their potentiality. They evolve on their whatever interests, so the behavior. So this is changing. The only advice I would say is that keep the chapter open, have a team that owns it, and make sure that you communicate it, and make sure that the markets get the proper uptake. And we have seen this before when the behavioral segmentation years ago was starting. Now it's the 3D one, and I'm quite sure that we all will be on the same track for this, for this journey.
Thank you. One more. Thank you for uh, presentation and guiding us through this complicated process uh, regarding transformation and particularly mindset and skills required. I would refer to um, strong power, which is leadership, because while doing this, you need to lead a very diverse team, most probably uh, distantly, and etc. And uh, <laughs> regarding the future leaders or leaders of future. Uh, one of particular um, feature of uh, such people uh, is uh, requiring, besides being comfortable with chaos and being very high in uh, emotional intelligence and very high and deep in technical background, but also uh, leading the hybrid teams, which is uh, consist of people and uh, some kind of artificial intelligence. <laughs> uh, for formats, yeah? And uh, my question is, how do you think, how far we are from being able to um, to be ready to lead such a diverse um, teams? And uh, if not, how we shall prepare to it? Good question, thank you so much. Um, I'll just uh, get the assistance from, from this slide. So when I talked about those three things, including the mindset piece and, and, and the topics you mentioned, the recommendation, my humble view, is that you need this central function. This central function is the lighthouse in the organization to assess and to help and to guide the teams and to put them on the same track and to create communities of practice for those subtopics. If you leave it individually, then you will get lost and there will be a mismatch in the momentum. So I think I'm a believer of uh, global to local and local to global and making sure that we meet the mindset bottoms up and top down. But without a capability building function and without a customer engagement function and without a transformation function centralized to have an overarching view on the momentum of the organization towards those topics, the speed will be different and we will start to face, to face issues. So this is my answer to, to the solution from my humble view. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.